charities in Calais that are sending them up every day. That resource was one of the very, very few left in who works in uh, Ill's convoys to Calais. And last week, two of us were working in the refugee camp and in the refugee centres in Calais all week. And the last thing to say is even clearer. There is a very simple way out for the plight of the refugees. in the newspaper that has persecuted the refugees throughout the crisis has tried to blame the refugees for what happened. We need to be absolutely clear. Thanks for coming. Um, Understanding really a picture of what's happening with these families, whether it's writing to your MP, whether it's fundraising, whether it's any, I think any little thing you can think of, if you can. With these people, they've come through the appalling conditions to, to get to northern France. Um, in Croydon, just last week, we saw the horrific attack of uh, Raker Ahmed, but let's be absolutely clear what we've seen. Racist attacks, there's always been a level of resistance. Where's that left off? Because let's remember that two years ago, when the, the refugee crisis that has led to so many people living in the rotten, squalid conditions in Calais and Dunkirk that Andy described a few minutes ago, the attitude of the then Prime Minister David Cameron was that not a single one of those refugees would be welcome here in Britain. He was describing refugees as a swarm, dehumanising them. His then Foreign Secretary, Philip Hammond, now the man responsible for the purse king.